Hey, it's Tom for GAK, and today I'm going to be building a budget metal rig. So there's a bunch of options available on the market, which can be quite overwhelming for people. I think if they're trying to find, you know, their their way into finding a decent metal tone um, at an affordable price. And so um, what I want to do with this little video is going to be potentially making you aware of different options that are available, different avenues that you can go down to achieve roughly the same thing, and some of the variations you get in there. So what I'm thinking of gear-wise is gonna be a guitar, an amp, and maybe something like a pedal to push the front end of the amp, depending on what amp we go for. In terms of uh, limitations on the, the, the rig, we wanted to make uh, sure that the, the rig was loud, so you could go and jam out with someone, um, which involves using a, a proper amp rather than um, using like a floor modeler or something like that. Although the options are there, we wanted to stick with you know, a traditional style amp. We also wanted to keep things relatively affordable, so we're not spending potentially over £500 on anything. In fact, most of the things that we're going to be looking at are between 200 to, to 400 you know roughly that area so one of the aims with the video was that we were going to put together a little rig and we're actually going to try it as well so i'm going to grab a guitar and an amp and a pedal that i think are appropriate and i'm going to put them together and you'll be able to see how it sounds so if we jump into guitars uh when i think metal you know that that sort of modern metal sort of sound uh, i'm thinking for this i want to go down the hardtail route which is going to be um, no trems. Um, the option is there to use a trem, but I want to focus more on the rhythm aspect because if you're going for a guitar that's going to be down-tuned, like let's say maybe you're in drop C, drop D, you want something that's going to be able to take down-tuning fairly easily. If you swap between tunings on a trem, the trem's going to go crazy. So hardtail is going to be where I'm at for this. Um, when I'm thinking hardtail guitars, I'm thinking Ibanez RGs, so there's a, there's a lot of options there for hardtailed. Um, I'm specifically going to be thinking about maybe nothing with locking tuners, so that's immediately, we already said no trems, but here's an idea for you. You could get one with a trem, block it off, so that involves putting something in the back of the guitar, and then uh, it will operate in the same way as a fixed bridge guitar. So that's an idea, but I'm not going to go down that route, so we're going to go hardtail. In addition to Ibanez RGs, I'm going to think ESP, so the LTD range from ESP, which is a more affordable range. A uh, bunch of those come in options for hardtail. Um, they do single cut style guitars as well as like a, a, a super strat style uh, shape as well. Uh, Squire have some options as well for things with, with humbuckers. So one of the things we're going to be looking for here for metal in particular is going to be having the options for humbuckers because humbuckers are going to first of all get rid of that hum um, that's why they're called that but also they're just going to deliver a, a far higher output and be more metal because it's going to push the front end of your amp slightly harder so another thing that potentially i want to look for is a nice clean tone and you might be thinking you know metal clean tone what but the main thing that I want is a really nice glassy clean tone because when you hear some of these metal tracks you're hearing you know it goes from clean to like brutally heavy within the you know the space of a second um, and I want the option to have a really nice clean tone as well so potentially I'm looking for something with coil splits or uh, coil tap and uh, a really nice in-between position between the humbuckers um, just to get that like glassy sound. So this is the guitar that I've ended up with uh, it's one of the LTD EC256 series. Uh, the reasons I chose it were that it has two humbuckers in it, it's got a fixed bridge here, but most importantly as well is that it has the coil tap feature on this volume tone pot, um, and that's going to enable it to drop the output from the humbuckers, which means that you're going to get a slightly nicer clean tone rather than running um, you know, full fat humbucker into an amp. The guitar is also a single cut shape, which is quite friendly for hard rock and metal players. Uh, the neck is comfy and thin, um, but not too thin. It's got a nice amount of chunk on it. Uh, yeah, so let's have a listen to how it sounds.
So when it comes to amps, there's going to be a few things that I'm looking for. Number one is going to be, does the amp produce enough gain and distortion by itself in its preamp section? So when you turn the gain up, does it produce uh, a distorted tone? There are options on the market for this sort of thing. Um, ultimately, we're probably not going to end up using uh, something like a Fender Blues Junior, because those don't really break up enough uh, when you push the gain and they're more a pedal platform. So what I'm looking for is an amp that can produce all of those distorted tones by itself without any additional input. The second criteria here is gonna be whether the amp is loud enough by itself. You want to be able to compete with potentially a drum kit or you know, let's say you're jamming out with someone else and you wanna turn it up a bit or you're potentially going to go and play a gig and you need some of that volume if you're gonna be mic'd up. Um, so that you can get enough out of the amp that you need. So when I'm thinking amps like this, I'm thinking potentially solid state, I'm thinking potentially valve. Um, ideally, if it's a bedroom setup or you know like a jamming rig, uh, the option to have uh, a line in would be fantastic. So you could play things from your, your iPod or your laptop. Um, I'm also looking for options for um, effects loops so you could put a reverb or a delay within the effects loop and uh, you don't need to necessarily have it in front of the amp because that's going to affect the way that the amp responds. The option for foot switches here is going to be quite important as well because I want to be able to go from that clean sound to that completely distorted sound with a, a switch of a button. So that's going to be something I look for. When I think amps like this, I'm thinking maybe the Blackstar HT series. Those amps are great. They've got two channels on them generally. Uh, they've got options for effects loop, they um, have enough gain on tap. Uh, the Black Stars are really cool as well because they have an emulated out on the back, which means that when you are recording, you wouldn't necessarily need to mic it up. You could just take the emulated out from the back and go direct to an interface or to your front of house if you're playing a gig, which is a really good option to have. Some of those amps can be slightly more expensive than the other offerings that potentially there are. Um, so if we have a look at things like Orange, like the Crush series is really good. Um, they've got a bunch of options in there. They've got two channels on some of them. The RT series has got uh, reverb built in. So if you wanted to, you could have that as an effect as well. You wouldn't need to outsource it to a pedal. A slight curveball suggestion could potentially be the PV6505 mini head. I know that this is a head, so it's gonna be different, but and you'd need to uh, pair it with a cab, but if you had a load box or something like that, you could use the mini head, and that's gonna have all of those characteristics of the 6505, but with slightly limited um, features, and it's just gonna do a really great metal tone out of the box. But that's a little bit more expensive, and it's gonna be a slightly different setup to what we're potentially going for, but it is an option. So when it came to an amp, I decided on this. This is an Orange Crush 35RT, one by 10 in black. Uh, I chose black because obviously it's metal, you know, you want, you want black. Most importantly though, it has two channels on it, so it can go between a clean and dirty uh, channel. That means that you can have a really nice you know, glassy clean sound, and then you can go straight into the dirt with the option to switch between them with a foot switch, which was one of the things that I was looking for. Um, most importantly though, the amp goes between uh, those really clean tones and you know, very much distorted tones with the, the gain knob here. Um, so you can, you can get all those breakup tones that you need. Um, it's got reverb built in as well, so you wouldn't need to outsource that to a pedal. Uh, it's got the option for an auxiliary in, and you can practice with it with headphones as well, which is super useful if you're a bedroom player or you want to be able to do those sorts of things. The app also has an effects loop built in on the back, which means that if you wanted to run your delay or chorus or uh, a different reverb in the back, you could do that. So the longevity is there, and that's something that we were looking for with something like this. The other thing with it as well is that it comes in at under 200 pounds, and for the sound that you get out of it, that's well worth the money in my opinion.
So in terms of pedals, there's a few different things that I'm going to be thinking of as well. Number one is going to be, what does the pedal do to our signal chain? And that's going to be if the amp isn't necessarily distorting the right amount, do we need a distortion as well to provide some of those tones? Um, if an amp does distort enough, but it needs to be tightened up a little bit, so it's slightly flubby in the low end or a little bit harsh, we could use something like a tube screamer. Uh, an overdrive is going to push the front end of that amp a little bit more. And you can use it as a boost to saturate the preamp a little bit more and you, you end up with some of those tones. So another route that we could go down would be the multi-effects route. So there's companies like Boss, uh, which do you know, multi-effects units and they have a, a bunch of functionality in them. Uh, depending on which unit you can get, they can be quite expensive or relatively cheap. So if you're looking to spend a little bit more, get a few more effects and those sort of things, then one of those units is probably going to be up your street. However, when we're building a, a metal rig, we might necessarily not want those features and we might not necessarily want to uh, spend the money on something like that. So this is the pedal that I've chosen. It's an Ibanez TS Mini. Uh, it's basically a TS9 in a smaller enclosure, essentially. Uh, it's got some slightly different features, but the main thing that I'm looking for out of it is that it can push the front end of the amp a little bit more. We can drive it. If we turn the level up and turn the overdrive down, we can use it as a clean boost into there. Um, it's going to have the characteristic mid-range hump that you see from uh, these style of overdrives, which we're going to use to tighten up the front end of the orange a little bit more. So the thing to listen out here for is going to be that the bass and the uh, high end slightly decrease or we end up with a more mid-range character, which is going to enable us to tighten up our sound slightly. There are other overdrives which achieve this feature, but this is the one that we chose because it's small and uh, you know, tube screamers are basically an industry standard for this sort of thing. So this is probably something that you'd look for. Uh, let's have a listen to how it sounds. So that was my budget metal rig. Uh, I think we got in the right ballpark with this sort of thing. Obviously, the, the options for stuff like this are enormous. So there's a, a, an enormous amount of gear. There's a really wide range of tones that you get in metal. Ultimately, we're not going to be able to please everyone, but you should be able to get the tone roughly there with this sort of gear and hopefully you will know why I've chosen the things that I've chosen so that you can start to look for those things in your own uh, gear purchases. So if you've got any thoughts on uh, different gear to try out, um, other options that we potentially could consider, please drop a comment in the comment section below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and we'll see you soon.